heard about John of God in the December issue of O Magazine, which we've devoted to miracles. You'll want to get a copy to read more about this, and uh, you can even download our new app. I'll tell you about that later. You are a journalist, so you write about science. Uh, excellent job on the BP spill, as a matter of fact, in our edition. How do you explain what you saw? I just don't think we know everything. Mm -hmm. There was really this collective sense of people being loved and helped. Um, and, and if you think about all the the vibes that we give out on a given day, our emotions, mm -hmm. let's just say all of them were good. I just think that what's happening there is it's more intense. It's channeled just stronger there. Well, does, doesn't he encourage you to go into a room and you pray yes. and meditate first? So everybody's thinking about helping other people. Yeah. So I was just going to say, you know, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name. So when you gather that many people together with a sense of hopefulness and the energy of hopefulness, you know, positive things could happen. I think that's the exact idea for having everybody sort of focused on we're meditating, we're praying. And, you know, I'm not religious. Mm -hmm. I don't have any religious upbringing at all. But I do think that, you know, the energy of love, mm -hmm. the energy of faith, those things are powerful. Yeah. In, in, in O Magazine this month, you call this article Leap of Faith. Right. Was it a leap of faith for you as a journalist and somewhat skeptic to see that? Was it a leap of faith? Yes, but not only see it, I had to feel it. I was in quite a deep depression, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't when even you went realize there. this. Yeah, so yes. let me just explain. Following Susan's uh, father's sudden death two years ago, she experienced what she called a tsunami of grief, is how you described it. And in the article uh, in, in December, oh, she describes how she wondered if John of God could help patch up the hole inside you, is what you said, right? And help you love your life again. I mean, I, I really didn't see joy in things. I didn't, you know, and think of all the work that we do that's so fun. Mm -hmm. And I was not feeling that. And I thought, okay, it's definitely time for me to stop being this sad. Because it had already been a year since It had since already been father. almost two. Yeah, since you um, And I thought, that's, that's enough. Mm -hmm. But I could not get out of that place myself. And you were in the place where you didn't think you could feel joy again. Right. Okay, and so what happened to you? I think it was about the third day I started feeling lighter, mm -hmm. almost like a cloud had lifted. And I think it was even after I saw him a couple of times, after I spent some time. Uh, so do you like walk before him and he yes. like lays hands on you or something? You, I, I touched his hand, but he doesn't really lay. He didn't lay any hands uh, when I was there. He was just looking at you. He looks at you and they say, look him in the eyes because that's, you know, he's working on you. And the first time I went to see him, I thought that that was it. You know, that, that was, I came all this way and lightning? that's it. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where's, where's like the big flash of insight or whatever it is. And it's just like, come back later. Basically go take a blessing and come back. And I thought, oh, that, oh, I was hoping for something more. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the second time I, I went, he asked me, he again, didn't spend any time with me, but he looked at a picture of my father and I, and then he told me to sit in the healing room mm -hmm. and I, was there for three hours. Three hours went by like 20 minutes and it was blissful. And what do you mean blissful? It was like, I felt like I was floating. I was talking to my father. He had said to the translator, because he doesn't speak English. So you have a translator there with you. Uh, I'm taking care of you. Go and sit and be with your father and represent yourself to your father. So how do, how do you do that? Well, I, I, it was meditation and I'm, had meditated before. I wasn't a daily, I have to meditate kind of person, but I So you're sat sitting there. in a healing room by yourself or with other with people? With lots of people around, hundreds of people and around. And everybody's praying? And everybody is just sitting with their eyes closed and you're not allowed to cross your legs or your arms. Mm -hmm. they, they tell you to not to do that or to open your eyes, that that actually, you know, the, the, whatever energy they say is coming through will be like kinking a hose if mm -hmm. you cross your arms or your legs. And you think if you were told to go sit like this for three hours, you would go, three hours? Mm -hmm. How can I do that for three hours? It went by like minutes. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I at that like time, I had, you are thinking about your father? I was speaking to him. It was very real. It was a much more of a vision than I had ever had before. Uh -huh. Even right after his death, when I felt, uh, I, I felt an intense 
longing to talk to him and that he was still kind of present and then that faded a bit it came back but it was very happy and i got this feeling like that i shouldn't be that sad it was okay that everything was okay you mean when you were sitting in this yes. quote healing room but but you know somebody can tell you that you know this all sounds very woo woo to me oh yeah i know but you know i i'm not a woo woo person mm-hmm. um and i spend my time you know hanging around with guys that are surfing 100 foot waves mm-hmm. and they're they're, they can't afford to be woo. They're very logical yeah, and yeah. are very linear. And so, how do you think you're a different person after that experience when you didn't go for a specific healing? I just feel as though I saw the joy in life again, and I started sleeping less. I had more energy. I felt like lighter. I just felt lighter, and mm-hmm. I felt happier. I actually probably couldn't have been sitting here right now talking to you about my father without totally breaking down. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. Up next, a medical doctor who was a big skeptic goes to see John of God, then mysteriously starts to bleed. Wow. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. You have to be very open to this. You can't have any fraction of doubt because the more doubt you put in, the more darkness you're putting against your healing. And the more doubt you're putting against God's will, you've heard like asking you shall receive. And if you ask with an open heart and an open mind, in time you will receive, you will get your blessing. That was from a documentary about John of God. Dr. Jeff Rediger traveled to Brazil, as did Susan Casey we were talking to earlier. Dr. Rediger traveled as a skeptic, a definite skeptic, right? Mm-hmm. Because you were hoping to uncover what you believe to be the truth behind John of God's controversial form of healing. But once he got there, he no longer knew what to believe. Take a look. Our goal has been to collect the lab reports and the uh, radiological exams, photos of people who report having been physically healed and to see if the reports can document that. We just want to see if if this is true. If it is true, then it's a worldview destroyer for me because uh, it means that there are things happening that I don't know how to explain. Dr. Jet Rediger wanted to witness a physical surgery firsthand. What do you feel right now? No problem. ask that you decide for yourself what you believe is ask true that and you decide for yourself what you believe ask that you decide for yourself what you believe is true and And what is not? 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 